I am Dr. Holly Anderson. I am the Director of Education and Outreach at the Ronald O. Perlman Heart Institute at the New York Presbyterian Hospital and an attending cardiologist at Weill Cornell Medical Center. Education kind of runs in my family. My parents and grandparents were educators. It is something that it was always instilled in me as being one of the most important things in life. And uh, I got a tremendous education at Dartmouth. Medical education really, when you are a doctor, it's your duty to educate other doctors. We teach by the Socratic method. We learn and then we teach. And that has always been a great joy for me. You don't always see it, but it's the TP interval, right? Because that's when there's no electronic uh, activity. So when you're measuring ST elevations and ST depressions, that's what you want to do it in rev. So you don't miss uh, acute pericarditis and treat it like Hi there, how are you? Hello. Have a okay. Thank you for doing Thank you. It's a really happy thing when we get to discharge somebody that doesn't have a major heart event. You know, heart disease, coronary artery disease that leads to to heart attacks and uh, stents and bypass. I have a practice of cardiology and certainly I need to teach my patients. So I've devoted part of my career now to actually going out into the community and teaching about heart health and teaching other doctors outside of cardiologists, emergency room doctors, pediatricians and obstetricians, the importance of beginning early and teaching their patients about how to reduce cardiovascular disease. You know, it's the number one cause of death among men and women globally now. Correct, yeah. More than infectious disease, more than childbirth. And we're exporting it. Yeah. Yeah. Heart disease is the number one cause of death for both men and women in this country and now worldwide. And what we're seeing in this country is that deaths due to heart disease is actually increasing in our youngest population. One of the great things about being a cardiologist is that it's largely a preventable disease. So if we can get into our communities and teach people to live more heart healthy, it's crucial for our future, for our, our community, for our economy. Traditionally, doctors haven't played a big enough role in, uh, in prevention, especially with respect to heart disease, but that's changing. Unlike most people, I think, who matriculated Dartmouth and became doctors, I didn't know I wanted to be a doctor when I was there. I actually didn't think about becoming a doctor completely until I was sitting in organic chemistry class and I realized, ah, everybody here is going to be a doctor. I could be a doctor. I was um, very interested in the brain and biochemistry and behavior. That's what my uh, interest was. And to take biochemistry, I had to take organic chemistry. So I spent a lot of time talking to the professors of medicine at Dartmouth and elsewhere about what it meant to be a doctor, because I really hadn't flushed it out. And um, went down to the National Institutes of Health and worked under a Nobel laureate who ran the Laboratory of Central Nervous System Studies. I became a cardiologist because Cardiology is the most fun and I really, really enjoy taking care of patients and working on patients and being with patients and really don't have the personality just to be a basic scientist in a lab. I still am very interested in neuroscience and now I'm working on the board of the Michael J. Fox Foundations on Parkinson's research and had the opportunity through my education at Dartmouth to meet many of the world leaders in neuroscience who are working on Parkinson's disease. The fact that Dartmouth is so closely tied to the Dartmouth Medical School while I was there was uh, greatly influential to me. I was able to take courses at the medical school and be exposed to physician scientists at an early level. And that was really motivating. And these were people who took time to meet with me because I didn't know I wanted to be a doctor right away. So I had the opportunity to talk to them about what it was like, what their careers were like. and. Um, they were incredibly inspiring. That, that connection with the medical school, those research opportunities, those people that were made available to us was priceless. People ask me all the time, how do I do everything in one day? And I will say my days are jam-packed, busy, but they're all busy with really good things. And um, I'm very fortunate to have uh, an incredible family. I'm very close to my, my children. My family is number one in my life. And uh, I, ha I know that uh, when I leave them to go do my work, it has to be something important and rewarding. My mornings are, are really about my children. We get up, we have, uh, we have breakfast together, we talk about the day. I love to go to the park with my son. We make the mornings a little bit of playing football, just anything to get him a little bit more tired, he's so energetic. I do try to get home to have dinner with my family. I don't go out to many social events during the week unless they're incredibly important. My husband's amazingly supportive. He always was. He was there when I decided to be a cardiologist. He was there when I decided to be a doctor. 
So when I teach medical students and residents, I, I really encourage them to choose a career pathway that they find is most fun and rewarding and not choose one based on lifestyle. Because if I'm going to be spending time away from my family, I want to make sure I'm doing something that I think is incredibly important and fun. You know, I was asked to testify in front of our city council uh, about the heart disease in women in New York City. And the only city council members that were there were really of the underserved community. And they said, huh, you know, I go to my church every Friday night and have a fish fry. And I was thinking that if we could teach a community how to cook better, we could teach a culture. And I always think that if you can educate a woman, you can educate a family. There is a faith, a health ministry within many congregations and it's been shown academically that faith-based education programs work in African-American communities especially. So we, I wrote for a grant, we started this program and uh, we've partnered with many pastors of all five boroughs now and they came to our institution for 12 weeks to learn how about heart disease and its prevention and now there are ambassadors going out to their congregations and teaching their their community and their congregations about how to live more healthy. My name is Dr. Naslo Teddy and I am the coordinator of cardiovascular health education and community outreach at New York Presbyterian Hospital while Cornell Medical Center Ronald O. Perlman Heart Institute. I was hired by New York Presbyterian Well Cornell Medical Center in 2011 and I met with Dr. Holly Anderson at the time and she expressed to me her vision about working with faith-based um, organizations. And so I started researching programs that were already in existence to see um, what other groups were doing um, working with faith-based organizations. And I did not find anything that was actually faith-based. Most of the programs were faith-placed in that uh, organizations would go into the faith-based um, groups and either offer information or just give them their program without actually incorporating the culture of the church, the actual belief systems of that particular denomination. It's pretty easy to look at scripture and have scripture say, take care of your body, it's a temple, it's the only one you have. That God wants you to take care of your heart. And, uh, and our course is motivated by scripture and that's what this community really believes in and trusts. We picked a very eager group of uh, pastors and community and church leaders to begin with in our first class and they're all more enthusiastic than the other and they're all better speakers than the other. So they bring with it huge motivation and uh, they have been so grateful to us. But Pastor Calhoun has lived and breathed the Heart Smart session. Um, Pastor Calhoun has been an asset to the program. I am astonished that as a pastor, he took the time to go through the 12 week training. It's, it was 12 weeks, three hours each week, and he never missed a class. I'm Pastor Richard Calhoun, and I'm the senior pastor of the Flatbush Seventh-day Adventist Church in Brooklyn, New York. Well, the Hearts March was important to be involved with because when we look at the community, there are so many health problems. The congregation has accepted it with open arms. They really, they really like it. They um, want to participate in it. They want us to do another one. Uh, the folks who went through it, they have seen changes instantaneously almost. We had people who had high blood pressure, people who were recovering from um, open heart surgery and so forth in the past, and they just saw a difference in themselves and their health, their energy. I think a lot of people are living kind of with rose-colored glasses on. They don't realize until somebody gets sick, until something happens, then they say, oh my, we have to do this, that, or the other. But by constantly just letting folks see and hear and be aware, and one, that these problems are out there, but two, you don't have to be afraid of them. They're not saying, well, this is something that the doctor has to do and the hospital has to do, but we're going to empower the individuals in the community to go and to do these things. And I think that that's fantastic. It's not self-serving, it's community serving. Seeing the outcomes of this program, seeing that people have been educated about preventing cardiovascular disease, seeing that people have changed their lifestyles, they're eating better, they're exercising, drinking more water, they're managing their stress, their blood pressure has gone down, um, they've lost weight. It is fascinating to me because we put this out there as a labor of love, so to speak, and to have it um, actually change people's lives is we couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah, I think, I think being a doctor, being, taking care of people is a real human job.
And even though we have to learn a lot of science to deliver it, don't forget that the human connection is the most important. One type of student that the medical school at Dartmouth is attracting are future doctors who want to be future leaders of medicine, both in medical education, but also have a commitment to global health. We feel obligated to do that. We're training our, our, our medical students to do that. And I think we have a real important role um, that we're going to help other institutions figure out healthcare delivery, not only at a national level, but at a global level. The new science in cardiology is incredible, and what we've done in the past 15 years has transcended you know, the last 50 years. We are right now working on approaches that are minimally invasive, that allow patients to come in, get uh, their coronary arteries open, and they get their valves replaced uh, without a big incision and get home and get back to their families as quickly as possible. But I think where we also need to spend time is, is getting out in the communities and preventing this disease because uh, we're going to make bigger progress in a shorter period of time if we can do that. Dartmouth is not just a place to get an amazing education and lifelong memories and relationships, but Dartmouth is a culture. I think there's this palpable commitment that we're there to prepare ourselves to go out and do something, to achieve, to work hard, and to make a difference. And I think everyone that spends time on the Hanover Plain feels very connected to it. Dartmouth helped me become the person I am. It gave me a great education, it gave me inspiration, it gave me motivation. It is a culture where people encourage each other to take risks, to go out and achieve, to make something of your lives, and to give back.